Hello everyone, I'm Jenna and this is Learn Academic English. Here on my channel, I teach intermediate and advanced level lessons for people who want to take their language to the next level and improve their English for school or work. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to write a conclusion paragraph. It's not hard if you know how to do it, but it's an important part of your essay. So in today's video, I will show you how to write a conclusion paragraph. I will show you a few things you should not do in a conclusion paragraph. And then I will show you some examples of good conclusions so that you can see exactly what a good conclusion should look like. Before we get into that, please don't forget to give this video a like, leave a comment below, and subscribe if you want more lessons like this one. And note that I offer memberships on my channel for those of you who want more connection and practice with me every week. Okay, so let's learn about how to write a good conclusion paragraph. So first of all, what are we talking about? We're talking about the last paragraph of your essay. So if you're writing an essay of three or more paragraphs, the last paragraph is going to be your conclusion paragraph. The conclusion can be short or a little bit longer depending on how long your essay is. So for a shorter essay of maybe two to three pages, your conclusion paragraph is going to be fairly short. So we're thinking probably three to five sentences. If your essay is a little bit longer, say three to five pages, your conclusion might be a little bit longer maybe four to six sentences. And if your essay is quite long, your conclusion might be a little bit longer. But in general, a conclusion paragraph should not be too long. I like to tell people that they should think about their conclusion paragraph the same way that you feel when you go to see a movie and you are at the end of the movie. When you watch a movie and it's the end of the movie, what do you want? Well, you want to feel that the movie is finished, right? You don't want there to be any loose ends or any new ideas like a new plot twist that suddenly shows up at the end of the movie and then feels unfinished. Instead, you want to feel that there is a sense of closure, that the movie is finished and you feel satisfied. That's the same feeling that your reader should have at the end of your essay. You want to give them a feeling of closure, that it is finished, and leave them feeling satisfied. To do this, you're going to do two basic things. First, you're going to remind the reader of the most important ideas in your essay, and then you're going to leave them with some kind of feeling to finish the essay. But I like to think of it in three different parts. So let's go through those parts one by one. Number one, restate your thesis statement, but in different words. So you don't want to copy and paste your thesis statement here. You want to restate your thesis statement using some slightly different words. Then, number two, you're going to give a quick summary of the most important ideas of your essay. So in two to four sentences, you're going to summarize the most important points from your body paragraphs. This helps to remind the reader how you supported your thesis. Now, how is this different from restating the thesis? Usually when you restate the thesis, it's going to be a little bit more general and then the summary of the main points is going to get a little bit more specific. Now, if you're writing a timed essay, meaning an essay in class or an essay maybe for the TOEFL or the IELTS, you can usually skip this second step. Instead, you would just restate your thesis and then skip the second step of summarizing your main points. Next, number three. This is what we usually call the final thought. And the final thought can look like one of the following. Number one, it can be a prediction about the future. Give the reader something to think about related to your topic in the future. Number two, a call to action or a suggestion. 
What should the reader do now that he or she has read your essay? This is a very common way that we conclude an argumentative essay. So if we try to persuade someone about a topic, then the conclusion might give a call to action. What should they do now? And then number three, you can also make a connection back to your hook. Now, if you remember, a hook is the first part of your essay where you catch the reader's attention. It's the very first part of your introduction. And sometimes this can be an interesting way to finish the conclusion by making a connection back to that hook. And I'll show you an example of that in just a moment. You can use a transition to show that the conclusion is beginning. You can use one of the following. In conclusion, in summary, to sum up, or to conclude, and be sure that you use a comma after it. Okay, let's go on and look at a couple of things that you should not do in the conclusion. Number one, you should not copy and paste any sentences from your essay. So if you restate the thesis, don't copy and paste the thesis. Instead, use some slightly different words. The same thing with the summary of the main points. You don't want to copy and paste any of those, but instead try to say it in a new and probably more concise way. Number two, don't introduce new ideas in the conclusion. Now, if you're going to give some suggestions or advice or a call to action, that is actually a new idea. That's okay because that is helping the reader to know what comes next. Okay, I just read your essay. Now, what am I going to do with this information? But you don't want to give a lot of new ideas in the summary. And I'll show you an example of that in just a moment to help you see how that can be a problem. But again, remember that you don't want to give new ideas in your conclusion. And finally, as I mentioned before, your conclusion should not be too long. Usually you're going to be aiming for between four and six sentences. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some examples of conclusion paragraphs. First, I'm going to show you an example of a conclusion that has some problems because there are new ideas. And then I will show you three examples of good conclusion paragraphs. Now I'm going to show you four examples of conclusion paragraphs. And first, we're going to look at an example of a conclusion that is not good. The reason that this conclusion is not good is that it introduces too many new ideas. So the topic of this essay is shyness. Why are people shy? And the essay talks about reasons or causes of shyness. Let's look at the thesis statement first. The thesis says, psychologists have found that shyness can result from both biological and environmental factors. Okay, so that's the thesis statement that shows the main idea of the whole essay. Now let's look at the conclusion. To sum up, shyness seems to have both biological and environmental causes. Okay, so you can see how the uh, writer has restated the thesis in slightly different words. Next, in the yellow part, we're going to have a short summary of the most important ideas in the essay. Some people come into the world shy. Others become shy as a result of their experiences in life, especially because of family life, culture, and the use of technology. Okay, so you can imagine that there were different sections in the essay that explained these reasons that people are shy. Okay, so now we know what the main ideas of the essay were. Next, we're going to go into the final thought. However, since shyness can be caused by their, the environment, there are some solutions. If people know about the effect of technology on shyness, they can use technology less. If people understand the way that family causes shyness, they can find other ways to be social. Also, if they understand how culture can affect shyness, they can find ways to become more outgoing. On the other hand, perhaps shyness is not a bad thing and does not need to be avoided. 
Okay, so what's going on here? Well, in the blue section, we have uh, the writer is attempting a final thought with um, a kind of um, some advice or suggestions. The problem is that it's too much. If you want to use an advice or suggestion final thought, it should be concise and just leave the, the reader with a feeling like, hmm, something to think about. But this is too much. First, there are four different uh, suggestions or five, and it's in each of them um, leaves the reader feeling like, I want to know more about this. And again, it's just too much. So this is not a good conclusion. If the writer wants to explore solutions, the writer can actually add a solutions paragraph at the end of the essay. That could go uh, as a paragraph before the conclusion. And that would be the appropriate place to discuss so many different suggestions and to explain each one a little bit more. Okay, let's move on to three examples of good conclusion paragraphs. The first one is the same topic that we just looked at. To sum up, shyness seems to have both biological and environmental causes. Some people come into the world shy. Others become shy as a result of their experiences in life, especially because of family life, culture, and the use of technology. Okay, again, restatement of the thesis first, and then a short summary of the main ideas of the essay. Next, let's look at the final thought. However, since shyness is caused by increased technology, it seems that it can be partially avoided. If people become aware of this effect on social skills, they can prioritize time, spending time with people, and less time alone on their devices. If not, we may see an increase in shyness in the future. Okay, here we have a final thought that gives a suggestion, and it's really just one suggestion. If shyness is caused by technology, what can we do? And then it leads into a short prediction about the future. Again, this leaves the reader with a feeling of satisfaction. I know what the essay was about, and it leaves me with something to think about, or maybe something that I can do. Okay, let's look at the next one. The next one, the topic is about giving undocumented immigrants a driver's license. So let me just tell you really quickly about this topic. Um, in, this, in the United States, each state has different laws and some states have explored the idea of allowing undocumented immigrants, that means people who are living here without documents, to get a driver's license. And there are several benefits to giving driver's licenses to everyone. Um, the state of California actually passed this law several years ago. So this essay is um, no longer up to date, uh, but I do like to use it because the essay is quite good. Um, so let's just look at the conclusion, but just keep in mind that the law in California has already changed and undocumented immigrants can get a driver's license now. Okay, so the thesis. The state of California should offer driver's licenses to undocumented immigrants for security reasons. This is an argumentative essay that is meant to persuade the reader to take this position. Let's look at the conclusion. In conclusion, allowing undocumented immigrants to have driver's licenses will bring important security benefits to the people of California. Okay, take a moment, you may want to pause the video and notice how the writer restates the thesis statement at the beginning of the conclusion. The thesis statement idea is the same, but the words are slightly different. Next, it moves into a short summary of the main ideas. These benefits would include greater homeland security, safer roads, and more secure conditions for the undocumented. Okay, so it looks like the writer explored those three benefits in the essay. 
All right, so now we remember what the main ideas were. Next, let's go into the final thought. Like the Sacramento woman whose car was hit by an undocumented immigrant with no license or insurance, California residents deserve to feel secure while driving to work and school. And undocumented immigrants should be able to drive without fear. Because of the benefits to all residents, Californians ought to voice immediate support for this proposal, and lawmakers should begin the process of making it a law. All right, let's look at the final thought because there are actually kind of two parts. So the first part, like the Sacramento woman whose car was hit, what's this talking about? Well, this is referring back to the hook, which was at the beginning of the essay. Uh, at the beginning of the essay, the writer told a short story about a person in Sacramento. And so this is just reminding the reader of that hook, which allows um, the reader to feel like the essay has come full circle. Then it states why this is important and then what should be done. This is a call to action. A call to action is that people should voice support for this and lawmakers should make it a law. Could we take out this part right here? The connection back to the hook? Absolutely. We could take it out and then uh, the final thought would be a little bit shorter, um, but it would not be referring back to that story in the hook. Okay, let's go to the next one. And the next one, the topic is about changing expectations of marriage. This essay talked about how women's expectations of marriage, uh, they are changing in many Asian countries. Let's read the thesis statement first. There are three main reasons women's expectations of marriage are higher than before in many Asian countries. A desire for personal fulfillment increased independence, and a modern view of choosing a spouse. Okay, let's read the conclusion. In conclusion, the way that Asian women think about marriage has changed in recent years. Okay, so take a moment to notice how does the writer uh, restate the thesis statement. Next, we're going to go into the main or most important points from the essay, which um, is going to be these three reasons, okay? They are shifting from the traditional way of thinking about marriage to a more modern view, in which women value personal happiness, financial independence, and the right to choose their spouses. Okay, next, these higher expectations may shock a grandmother, but it will not surprise anyone in the next generation. So in this final thought, the writer is just giving a short prediction about the future. Uh, this topic doesn't really need like a call to action probably. Um, and this is just a great concise conclusion. Uh, the grandmother actually is another example of going back to the hook. In the hook, there was a story about a woman um, who had these new ideas of marriage and it shocked her grandmother. Uh, so this is connecting back to the hook. Is it necessary to do that? No. Then, short prediction about the future, it will not surprise anyone in the next generation. I hope these examples of conclusion paragraphs have helped you to see what a good conclusion paragraph can look like. I hope this lesson helps you to know how to write a conclusion paragraph. If you have questions, be sure to let me know below and make sure to check out my writing playlist because I have many other videos about academic writing that I know you will love. Until next time, take care.